we discussed the topics with Arthur, I was like misleading him, <laughs> and especially it, it was not about uh, this particular topic. And um, I believe it should be corrected and name it how to avoid distributed transaction in our nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> but we will discuss this. So cycle pattern is about uh, how we can make things work with distributed systems and how we can guarantee that our data is consistent so main challenge right now in nowadays and uh, to guarantee the consistency of the data in microservice world and we will go step by step see what challenges we'll have give me a moment yeah so i will guide you through these uh, areas and help you to understand it better hopefully so I'm asking you to prepare a question at the end and we will discuss it because like uh, this topic a little bit complicated even for me to concentrate on it and uh, don't miss any like, details. And uh, my study was based on the two presentation. Uh, one of them uh, is Tiago uh, Mendes uh, from, it was presented this topic on GopherCon UK last year. It was pretty short, uh, like 15 minutes presentation, but it's highlight the challenges that they have. And I will use a lot of materials from his uh, topic, even like jokes. And uh, he also make a um, nice, uh, simple application that demonstrates the main principles and we'll go through it. And another one is Chris uh, Richardson from the Vox conference. It was from 2017 uh and so they also discovered these patterns from different angle and it's more close for me from use case perspective so we'll try to go from the, some relation not to the theory but from use case and see how it works okay uh so our use case imagine that we are working on our online store hopefully most of you have such experience or can imagine how it works but uh, yeah usually it's Pretty simple. And our main indication for our service, so we provide some credit limits to our customers and uh, the sum of their order in total shouldn't be like, uh, be more than this credit uh, limit. It's pretty clear, uh, like simple um, and we should support it hardly in our system. So as first glance, what could be wrong? Yeah, when we're talking about that. Let's see. So uh, when we're talking, or when we think about design of the system, we can imagine in, in a simple way. So we have our application with, uh, for example, two models, order, order management, customer management, with the domain models, with order and customer, and uh, on the third tier, we have database with order table and customer table. I will try to simplify these things as, as much as possible. Yeah, and uh, in monolithic architecture, it's pretty easy to organize such guarantee with one transaction. Yeah, so we can close our request to database with transaction, verify all conditions, uh, make all checks, and if everything okay, we'll like atomic commit these changes to our system or roll back as well in, uh, if something goes wrong. Uh, I hope that's clear. Yeah, for now it's just how we think about this a like, couple years, couple decades ago, I believe. <laughs> yeah, uh, such approach uh, even handled concurrent with the transaction. So imagine that uh, some of our customer was pretty fast open multiple windows and make multiple requests at the time for different orders. And system will store them and proceed sequential and everything will be like uh, guarantees that we don't violate our limits, our limitation in our system. Um, yeah, monolithic system uh, is easy to start with, to design, to implement, but when we working with them uh, like, uh, for a long period of time, and especially if our system or service become popular and we want to add more features, we extend our teams, uh, it become like uh, pretty hard to maintain with the same velocity. Yeah, so 
adding new uh, feature, adding new protocols, adding new APIs become very challenging because it's require a lot of uh, communication, synchronization between the uh, between the teams. Even testing become challenging. Imagine you have one staging and each developer try to push their changes to the staging and like validate what's happening. Yeah, so a lot of complication comes on the level of um <laughs> okay i mean this slide might, might be a little bit later so a lot of complication requires uh when we deploy the system uh and when we organize our development in agile way yes so how we can improve different uh place in the system simultaneously without interaction of with, with minimizing of the its interaction with minimizing of it, its impacts on each other etc so uh, the answer is easy. We, uh, I believe we all know about microservice architecture, like opponent to the monolithic one. And it will uh, cover us all these gaps that may, uh, may become like uh, challenging when we developing with a huge team, uh, big application. I'm not stating that like, uh, no one should work with monolithic architecture get you right yeah i, I mm, the idea is here is that we usually with big teams with uh, big projects uh, microservice works better but it's really the, uh, depends so the microservice architecture is structures and uh, we should uh, guarantee the loosely couplet uh, compliance. So services should be isolated one of each other and loosely couplet. couplet. Um, let's see how our online source may look like if we talk about microservice application. So we support at least two, two clients of our clients, like a browser from HTML and mobile device with their protocols. Uh, imagine we have like our native application and uh, also yeah and we split our models to the services we uh, each service have each its own database etc yeah so it's pretty easy to imagine and uh, loosely coupling means that our service interacts with each other only via the api not on the level of the database so the database are isolated and accessed only by the service itself. It's main principle of the microservice architecture. And now when we think about how we can use ACID here, we see that it doesn't work because we cannot put our different tables in the single transaction. And here we came to this question, or at least for this topic that was announcement, yeah, when we're talking about uh, distributed transaction, we may face it with this with using uh, two-phase commits. It's pretty hard and not uh, like uh, good supported for, for example, for no scale databases. It requires like a lot of additional messaging in, and it works if everything uh, goes smooth and without errors. But if some errors exist, or appear in, in the time of processing, it's very hard to fix it without manual interaction. Yeah, so uh, two-phase commits become like anti-patterns and everyone tries to avoid them and uh, the less amount of the system supports it. So it's more protocol from protocol and pattern from uh, legacy system realism nowadays. So everyone encourages you to avoid it. <laughs> And that actually should be the topic of uh, name it uh, title of my presentation. Yeah, you know why I so complained on the beginning. Um, let's compare it with the saga pattern. So on the top we have distributed transaction when one transaction uh, combine all services and guarantees that it will be committed or uh, rollbacked for all at once. And uh, you understand, you may feel that something wrong with this when you see that some process should uh, rely pretty long in time in the systems that distributed in the network. Uh, it's violates well, availability principle a lot. So, you know, network may be crashed, some service may crash, etc. And we don't know what's happening with this transaction. 
And uh, Saga Patterns, instead, it's not acronymous, it's the name. Yeah, so um, it dictates that each service should maintain its own local transaction inside and communicate uh, uh, to another service that he finished his work and next service can proceed. This means Saga. So as for me, it's one storytelling. Yeah, when we tell the story and pass the ball to another author of our story. And then we combine it together. Okay, um, rollback in uh, the systems become uh, also challenging, as you may see. We don't have like single transactions that just uh, fire a rollback command and that's all. We should uh, write down and put down in, in uh, hard coded inside our logic the rollback mechanism and uh, predict beforehand all possible. Uh, like situations that may happen and uh, be ready for them. So be prepared for them. Uh, if you're talking about, yeah, let, let's simplify. So instead of services, we have this transaction. First, second, and all the next, yeah? And each transaction is like T, I, yeah? Should have its comp uh, compensation transaction that will roll back it. So we commit each transaction separately but if in some steps something fail or we discover that our credit limit was violated and we should roll back in some point of time, uh, we should uh, call all CI minus one uh, comprehensive uh, compensating transaction. Yeah, I believe that's clear. So it's um, as for me, it looks simple. Uh, it, it's not so simple to implement. It's not like very sophisticated. But uh, it's straightforward, it, uh, it's observable, and it's predictable. But it uh, definitely requires some uh, additional complexity on level of the API and on level of the business logic. Uh, OK, so uh, also, when we're talking about API perspective, we should think about two possible options, how we will respond to our Saga request. So when client make a request should be uh, response immediately. It's like uh, third options and recommended one. And first one is to wait until we gather all results and provide response with the outcome. Uh, yeah, and it's like uh, mirroring each other. Yeah, so it's process and scones are mirroring. So in the first option, we have outcome in our hands uh, on the response. Uh, and uh, drawbacks of this approach will reduce our availability. So if something goes wrong during the processing, uh, network collapsing, some service will fail, etc., uh, we may not obtain this response, especially in a big system, some um, security policy may be applied to long client connection, etc. So it's better to avoid a long running process. I mean, in terms of connection, because network is not reliable in most cases. Uh, and second, we respond immediately after we initiate the saga transaction. And uh, then we should think about how we communicate to the cloud the response with our results. So it's uh, uh, increased complexity of the logic of the, on the client side or on the server side, it depends. How you go with that? Yeah, and uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Saga also complicates the business logic. Yeah, so we should think about changes that we come in on each steps. Uh, we should uh, be prepared that our data may be inconsistent in some point of time because each service update their piece of data on their term, and it's uh, like obviously that in some period of time we may be inconsistent in terms of data. Uh, and we should uh, um, think about how we tr treat the state of order, uh, how we can interrupt, or what will uh, what will be if someone interrupts our creation step, etc. So a lot of questions should be decided beforehand and should be hard coded in our system and be like uh, presented, yeah, in code base. Mm -hmm. 
about uh, way of organizing saga it's two possible way uh, how we deal with this transaction so if you remember in first presentation in first presentation of saga father it's just a sequence between services and we have transaction like passing the stage between them so each transaction inside of them so how we can organize it uh, it's two possible way one of the choreography when each service knew uh, which service uh, it should notify after finishing their step so uh, we'll like take a look on them like <laughs> in the next slide, I believe. Yeah, and another one is orchestration when we have dedicated service that correspond for communication and uh, send the command to each uh, participant of the saga. Priority one the time, or one more time more. Let's review this how it will look like for our case. So we have two services, order and customer. Uh, remind orders may uh, check the total order amount and customer will provide them information for us information about customer limits. Uh, in this case, uh, when client sends a request, it goes through the message broker. Right now, just imagine it goes through the message broker. That's all. Uh, came to the order service, order service finish its transaction, send the request to customer service to proceed with their transaction. After customer service, after finishing their transaction, notify order service that everything is fine. So on the customer side, and then order service notify the requester that everything is fine, order was created, limit wasn't violated, etc. Uh, this communication become also like asynchronously. I just simplify this a little bit. So uh it applied we'll talk about this later okay uh so this system is totally uh decentralized implementation on the um, each service on the its own uh it's harder to test and debug i believe and harder to gain this knowledge so we spread our logic across the services um next orchestration when we have uh the corresponding services uh, this logic is centralized so place it in one place uh, our communication also bi-directional so uh, each steps uh orchestration on the saga like pipeline know each ser which service should be notified with which command wait for result and after processing the result he decides which service should be called next and uh this, no, this number of services could be like as much as needed so it's really uh, covered like uh, a more complex uh, system more complex workflows etc yeah and which of them to use yeah it's a good question and you know that it depends on the use cases as i mentioned um uh her Choreography used when we have simple workflow. It is easier to implement. It is easier to uh, let's say it's easy to implement. <laughs> yeah, all other steps will be more harder. And orchestration may become like your point, single point of failure. So we should should uh, think about uh, resiliency of the service and its availability, and uh, it uh, helps you to handle more complex workflows. Okay, about some principles regarding communication between orchestrator and participants. So, uh, uh, Saga orchestrator should invoke Saga participants. Uh, participants should reply to each comment that it take, and uh, Saga must complete even if some point uh, transaction is failed. Yeah, so. Uh, Compensate transactions should be invoked on all previous steps, as we discussed previously. Uh, yeah, and uh, of course, when we're thinking about how we communicate between the services, we may think about REST API, RPC, some kind of RPC API, and that will complicate your uh, system a lot. Yeah, so try to avoid using synchronous uh, communication. It's better in such uh, kind of pattern, it's better to work with. Asynchronous one. So we should use a message broker that will 
collect the messages from the participants and each participants may subscribe to any topics from replies that is important for all it okay uh i believe we already got that but <laughs> yeah uh, i think it's very important to highlight that uh, each participant should be some subscriber to its own comment channel and uh, send the results to the reply channel and vice versa orchestration should be uh listened to all uh should be sent comment to the all participants comment channel and subscribe subscribes to the reply channel yeah to collect the results so it's basic of asynchronous ability and when we're talking about messaging again we may face the situation that services starts transaction and already identify uh, our orchestrators that everything is fine i am finishing my transaction so please proceed next we should uh, remember that everything should be uh, stated and notification should be sent only after the transaction is finished and uh, when we think, think about that it's also a point of some challenges because we may have like uh, concurrency transaction in this moment and uh, some of them may happen like uh, we start our transaction with id4 but we finish transaction with id5 before it and if we, our client will like uh, read the topic with the wrong logic we will assume that five is our latest state and reads it and we'll miss the notification about transaction number four. Uh, so uh, we should think about that also and uh, try to make our messaging also atomic and uh, like safe. In uh, okay, uh, yeah, I, I'm ready to jump to the code base and review some some piece of code uh regarding this message and, and how we can store it uh, i refer you to chris it's described it, uh, and <laughs> tiago also they all both describe how to do that like properly and what challenges happen there um yeah uh, some outcomes i will describe later okay so when we were uh, talking about the code base i believe it's presenting for you yeah do you see my code base? Can someone yes. jump in? Cool. Okay. Uh, hopefully it's very readable and easy to understand. So right now uh, I am review uh, Tiago code base. Uh, his concept uh, or like prototype of some um, insurance company. Uh, and this insurance company provide insurance for the vehicle. Yeah, so uh, we have profile our insurance policy and uh, legal service. And, uh, you know, we should, uh, the challenge here to synchronize updates between uh, profile and uh, vehicle service because both of them could be changed at any time. And uh, it's like separate services. And here we have data inconsistency. Uh, policy, uh, each service organized, like I believe pretty uh, similar, yeah, we can, review both of them so main portion here we have our client that consume uh, some topic and trigger handler on this topic so let's review this handler on this update we uh, parse our data from the request and part of our request is is the command so we can like in his example we proceed with two possible use cases so next is our like normal workflow like uh, success workflow e and compensate it's our failure workflow so we move in one or another direction and in both way we create uh, like reply to our um, reply channel after we like make something on our side uh right now it just generate so everything is like pretty straightforward okay uh mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i i believe handler is looks is a pretty similar i just want to show you how it looks like on the implementation side 
yeah it's uh i encourage you all of you just uh, play with this example on your own uh so it has docker compose and everything right around and uh could be run it locally and you can play with it like uh to see how it works and how to implement and how this principle are working so let's come back to the presentation do, 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 do. yeah on on the knitted place uh okay <laughs> so uh cycle patterns allow us to work in with uh distributed system and uh, track the data consistency in the distributed system and that's how this topic should be named <laughs> eventually uh yeah and a uh, couple of, of important insights that you should be taken care of so try to use uh, unique transaction ids and uh, it helps you in debugging in in investigation issue in it importancy how we can support it because your system could generate a lot of different transactions they may be similar they may be uh, triggered by some repeat uh, strategy etc so uh unique transactions help you to identify like necessary data and uh uh yeah visualize it uh the importance means that when we have uh a reputation like uh, we just some service doesn't get the response and he tried to repeat the operation once more time our service should behave like uh normally uh in mathematical formula uh, function from x equal function from function from x you know so the state of the system doesn't change uh no matter how many times we repeat our operation uh provides data to the service uh, when you make the, requ the request so when we move by the saga pipelines each workflow uh, each like participant should obtain enough information on the beginning so try to avoid station when the participants should call other services to grab this data and combined all together it's also complicated and uh, make it harder to maintain and support and test etc and observer sagas i believe its observability is crucial part for any production system we should uh, track it and with saga you know when you're dealing with uh, distributed data and the consistency it's very important to track as much as possible so try to gather all metrics try to gather unique transaction id try to gather number of rollbacks etc so you should be visualize the state of the system uh, is much more as possible and that's make your life easier easy to predict behavior of the system and easier to understand what's going on really going on with the system because um in my experience it's uh, pretty interesting to investigate some issue when you're talking about uh, data consistency in distributed system i believe that's all so thank you for your attention and uh, right now we i am ready to answer your questions and we'll hit with a quick, quick question so if compensating transaction is failing we just we should repeat inconsistent it. yeah Sorry? you're right uh first of all we should uh predict that uh for me it's very hard to imagine how uh how it could be inconsistent so uh, how it could fail it could fail definitely in this way our service should repeat the request of roll back yeah so uh saga patterns means that our orchestration won't proceed without uh uh, guarantee is that our process is finished one way or another so it means that we should uh, put in our system repeat mechanism okay and another... observe yeah 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 just go ahead uh, it's good <laughs> I'm ready to proceed. okay now another question is like more philosophical or general mm -hmm. so to face commit is uh, yeah like complex and yeah requires like additional resources etc but i mean distributed transactions uh, and you uh, and saga pattern on the first glance look like you are implementing the same two-phase 
commit, but just by your own. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, so it's more flexible and it's more cover the needs of the application rather than rely on some technology. Yeah. Yeah, but on, on the other hand, you just get this complexity, which could be implement, implemented out of the box already. <laughs> no? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, for me, as for developer, it's better to implement it by myself. I don't know. <laughs> it's my personal choice. Yeah, and the last question. So uh, did, did you have a chance to, to, to implement it in real life, like your experience? Uh, no, I have a chance to observe the consequence when we doesn't support Saga Pattern and how to deal with like uh, inconsistent data and how to avoid and how to fix the situation in the production. So I wish I, I will, <laughs> I feel like implementation of Saga Parson in the production on these days. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's why I raise this topic because it's very interesting for me and like, uh, I'm looking forward to implement it in the next project if it will be necessary. Ivan, we have some question in our uh, questions in our chat. Can you mm -hmm. check? Uh, yeah, I will try. Yeah, I have been asking which which flow is better, is easy to scale if you have a lot of different uh, services. Easier to scale is the orchestration one. Because when you have like dozen of service, uh, choreography like became a mess. So it's very hard to uh, fit in your memory, like the model, which service call which one and like build this like pipeline. Okay, the question from your, from the chat, do you have your code sample published somewhere? Yeah, I will publish the links. So it's not my code base, it's Tiago. So yeah, I will share it. Yeah, and uh, thank you, Valen. I also heard, and I believe I review the presentation of Watermill as well, but uh, I have no chance to deep dive on it. So if you want, it will be interesting to, to present it next time. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so I also want to remind